Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Chemical Engineering at UCT. My name is Peter, and I'll be taking you through this presentation. And then with me, um, I've got Dr. Mareke fagan Endres, um, who is my colleague in the department, and Rahma Jakut, who works in our faculty office. And they will be answering your queries in the Q&A that you've got on your facility. So what we'll do is we'll start off with a bit of a welcome to the department, uh, what chemical engineering is, what the uh, department is like, and of course, um, a perspective from, from our most valuable asset, our, our students, and then we'll go into some questions and answers. So to jump straight in, um, I'm going to start off with what chemical engineering is and, and how we do that at UCT. And to answer that, that first question is actually quite simple. It can be done in one line. Chemical engineering is all about changing raw materials into useful products. And so this is something that can go all the way from what people call more traditional industries, just like oil and gas and turning that into fuel, uh, or coal and turning that uh, into energy, but also mining metals to make cell phones, laptops, um, copper cables, things like that. But it ranges all the way um, across the spectrum to also make pharmaceuticals, for example, to extract natural compounds, to make uh, cosmetics. Um, if you are more into the biotechnology space, where it's living organisms that help us to turn these raw materials into products, and then I'm thinking about, you know, if, if you think about making yogurt, um, making cheese, making beer, um, but also meat substitutes in a lot of the, the vegetarian products, that's all done through, through biotechnology processes. And, and the way we do these changes is because we understand the chemical, biochemical and, and physical nature of, of these materials. And so because of that, we then know how we can change them. And the changes happen through what we call unit operations, and that's something I will, I will talk to just now. But of course, we, we, we don't live on an island, so we need to make sure that all the changes we make, all these steps along the way to, to make that, that product um, needs to happen safe, sustainable and, and cost effective. And, and like I said, I want to come back briefly on these unit operations because they're really at the core of what chemical engineering is and, and what we do. And what they actually are is, is nothing more than generic process stages. So, so there's some pictures here to show you. So, so the first one is pills rolling off a conveyor belt. So this is where we handle solids. These are big ponds in water purification. So, so we need to be able to, to move around large quantities of, of liquids. Here it's water, but it can be liquid chemicals as well. Uh, we need to be able to mix complex stuff um, chocolate is fun to mix, but it's also a very sticky um, substance. So, so how do you how do you get that all mixed properly? Then we've got the reactors to, to do chemical reactions um, from from one thing to another thing. But it also involves drying stuff, filtering, separating, extruding it into into shapes. And so we call this these unit operations our, our toolbox or our, our building blocks, and we use these blocks to make big processes or design big processes. And, and as I said earlier, this can go um, across a, a very wide array of, um, of applications. And, and I'll just show you a few. So for example, if you think about water purification, uh, we've got raw water sitting um, in our dams. We, we need to get some of the, the solid stuff in there out. And so, so we add coagulants in here, then we need to mix that uh, properly and, and make sure that it, um, whatever dirt we have settles to the bottom. And then we need to separate um, the, the solids from, from the proper water. So, so we first let the heavy solids sink out a bit, but then we, we filter it. Then we obviously want, want water that, that has um, proper minerals in it, but that's also um, safe to drink, so, so we disinfect it. Um, and then we make sure it, it's at the right pH for us to, to drink it, and then eventually it goes in our taps. Um, and so, so this is one example. You'll find others with water purification that also involves um, using, using biotech. 
but you can see we use mixing, we use separating, we use filtering, um, and we use adding of both liquids and solids in here. Similar story for if you think about washing powder, so, so things we use, all of us use every day almost in, in our households. Um, so you get the solid powder, some of the soap that needs to be added. Um, you want that to be mixed well so, so, so that if you put it in your washing machine, it doesn't separate out. So, so we, we dry that properly. Here you want to sometimes add other stuff like a sort of nice smelling perfume or, or you know, some make it look very pretty with the blue and, and, the, and the red colors in there. Um, and then eventually, you know, you, you want this powder to be all mixed properly. Then you don't want it to be lumpy, so we want it to be loose powder. So we, we send it to a screener and then eventually it goes into the box that you find uh, or the bag nowadays that you find in the supermarket. So again, you know, we mix, we dry, we, we add solids, we add liquids. So, so you can see those, those generic stages come, come through. The last example is, is marshmallows. You know, we, we they add the, the syrup and, and the sugar, which you need to make sure that it, it properly mixes. Um, then there's egg whites that make it make it go nice and fluffy, gelatin that, that gives it that nice gooey um, sense of it needs to be mixed nicely um, and then so that it's nice and puffy and then that, that foam needs to you either make that into sort of long um, ropes or, or you, you just push it out as the as the little shapes. If it's in these um, ropes then you need to cut it into into what you find in the supermarket. So again there's there's heating, there's uh, mixing, there's extruding um, Again, a whole set of, of genetic process stages. And because these, and I can, I can give you many, many more examples, but because all of these, you know, solid handling, liquid pumping and so on, you need that to produce food and, and drinks, to make water, to make pharmaceuticals, to make cosmetics, to make energy, to make bulk chemicals, materials. In all of these industries, you've got unit operations that turn something from a raw product into a, a final product. And because of that, chemical engineers are involved in, in all of these. And so, so that makes, makes that, that chemical engineers are extremely versatile in, in where they can work and with what um, they, can, they can go and work. And so that is actually just one part of of what a chemical engineer is, is, is that ability of turning any sort of raw material in, into a, a finished product. But like I said already, we, we don't do that in isolation. We, we, we are part of society. And then I don't need to convince you anymore that as a society, we reached a point where we've got a big problem around, around sustainability. Um, and I'm not only talking environmentally, but also um, socially. So, so we need to change the way we do things. Um, and so a lot of the products we use today, plastics, fuels, coal, are, are not sustainable. And so you might be saying that, okay, yes, but, but it's, it's chemical engineers that are um, the big problem here because they created a lot of these processes. And, and to a large extent, that is also true. But it also means that we're the ones that, that have the ability and the responsibility to be the change. We've, we, we know the processes, we, we know how we can um, change these processes. And so that, that's what we need to do. So, so a lot of the, the current thinking in what chemical engineering, chemical engineers do is, is not only turning these raw materials into, into products, but also thinking very carefully about how do we do that? How we can, can we change what we do nowadays? Um, and that combination of these unit conversions to, to um, use or unit operations at least to, to make processes and do that in a sustainable way, we combine all of that in our curriculum. And, and we believe that chemical engineering and use at UCT is, is quite unique and, and that has different reasons. So, so firstly, our staff is, is really internationally top. Um, so, so we've got quite a few um, highly rated researchers um, on an international level. 
we've got very strong connections with the industry. So, so we've got a, an advisory board with the representatives of um, the industries where our graduates go and work. And so we get direct feedback from them as, as to what we do is still relevant for the industry. People in industry have, you know, they, they plan not, not just four or five years ahead, which is the length of a degree, but they, they think 10, 20 years ahead. So they can tell us now, okay, you know, where the industry is thinking that they'll go to in, in the next 20 years. So what kind of graduates they will need. And, and so, so that helps us to to be a soundboard and, and to, to allow us to make our degree and our graduates better and better all the time. We, we combine that with, with modern facilities so on, on the UCT campus. We, we've got by far the, the newest buildings, which also allowed us to, to design them a bit more targeted at what's currently needed in the way we, we teach the degrees. Um, so, so that, that involves both our, our lab spaces, but also our, our teaching spaces. Um, are really geared as as towards the way we want to teach our our curriculum, and then the actual program is is um, is accredited by the Engineering Council of South Africa, which links to what's called the Washington Accord, and that gives the degree uh, recognition internationally. So so you can take your uh, UCT Chemical Engineering degree and go work everywhere else in the world, uh, which is which is quite special. Uh, we use a lot of, of pro what we call project-based teaching. So, so we, we don't just teach, teach a concept and let you do an exercise and then move on. We, we let you use those concepts into real-life problems and let you design real-life solutions for them um, with all the complexities that, that come with it. And, and that not only gives you a, a sense of, of you know, what it is to, to be a chemical engineer already from when you're studying, but also you know, really deepens your understanding of the of the theoretical concepts. And and we do that through, you know, supporting you all along. So it's not only um, lecturing staff, but we also have a, a big body of, of um, what we call teaching assistants or, or tutors. So, so we have a ratio there of, of about one tutor per 15 to 20 students, which, which is quite high. And most of those tutors are, are graduates from our program who, who have stayed on to do masters and, and PhDs. So, so then they know the degree very, very well. They know where the pitfalls are. They know where the difficulties are um, and they know how they got through. So, so they know how they can guide um, you through as well when you're in the in the program. What, what really sets us apart from from other programs in the country and, and even around the world is that we have a built-in additional support program, uh, and, and I'll get to that in, in a minute as well, but, but we make sure that with, within our mainstream program, we, we work with what we call a cohort system. So we try to keep the same class from first year together all the way through to final year so that you really build those bonds um, across that class, but you also pull each other up to make it um, through the degree. And that, that gives us a very high success rate. So, so of all the students that, that walk through the door in, in first year, 80% graduate with, with a degree. So, so that is really high. So, so that means that everyone who comes in has, has a really big chance to, to graduate. Um, and, and while people don't make it, has, has you know, a, a vary in, in reasons. You know, some feel like this is not for them. They want to go do something else. So it's not just that the other 20% is, is people that fail. A lot of them is people who feel um, somewhere along the line that, that you know, this, this study choices may be, may be not there. So, so this 80% is really by far the highest uh, in the country. And then the last thing we have is that our graduates are, are well-rounded. And, and I'll get to that in a minute as well when we look at uh, the curriculum in a bit more detail. And that, that's over here. And so what you see, so, so the yellowish blocks is mathematics and science. The green blocks is, is chemical engineering core, like we call it. And then the darker green is, is when it goes more towards advanced engineering and, and specialization um, further down, down the degree. But if we focus on, on the first two years, what you see is that, that uh, the yellow part is, is 
still quite big. And the reason for that is that we need to build a mathematical and scientific foundation. As I said in the beginning, we, we use our knowledge of, of chemistry, biochemistry, and, and physics to turn the raw materials in, into products. So, so, so we need to know that up front. We need to embed that um, as a skill in you. And so that's why we, we put a lot of emphasis on maths and sciences. In the, in the first two years, the mathematics is there because these unit operations include complex calculations. Um, you know, we, we're pumping a lot of liquids around. There's a lot of gases involved and pressure and things like that. And so that requires you, if you want to then size equipment to know how big does the reactor need to be, how long does the pipe need to be, how strong does the pump need to be, you know, you need to be able to do the mathematical calculations that, that underpin that. So, so that comes, comes with it as well. Um, you see the little star here, and that's because in, in the second year, it's not just chemistry that you can choose. Um, we, we, the chemical foundation comes in in first year, but then in second year, we allow students to choose between either the follow-up chemistry course, but also a, a biotechnology course uh, or mineralogy. So, so because we, are, we know that, that chemical engineering is not just you know, turning um, oil and gas and other chemicals into into plastics and so on. Um, it, it's such a wide variety of, of industries. And so these science options allow you a bit to explore um, different things there. And then if you look at, at the more specific chemical engineering content, um, so, so we start off with some introduction in, in first year where we really put, put some basic um, concepts down and then the contribution of chemical engineering to what you do every day as a student becomes bigger and bigger and bigger until it sort of dominates um, quite a lot in, in third and fourth year. Um, and so what we do is, is in second and third year, the focus is a lot on getting these unit operations in so, so that, that you can really understand what the underpinning um, theory is for those unit operations. And then from the second half of third year into fourth year, you now really start using these unit operations, as I said, as a toolbox and as building blocks to put them together in a, in a design. So, so we, we prepare you for that in these big course in, in um, final year. And then there's a big final year design where you with a team of, of other students need to design a complete chemical process from absolute scratch. Um, and, you, and you do that by using your knowledge that you've built up uh, across the years. And so one important thing to notice here, those, those big blocks are very big courses. Um, and so the reason we, we work with these very big integrated courses is that it allows us to really monitor our students throughout the whole year. So it's not that you do a small course here and a small course there and, and it becomes difficult to track. We keep you together in, in, in the same group in a very big course so, so that we can really do uh, follow you closely and that we can also do that, that additional support. So, so both in um, the winter break and the summer break, we have what we call boot camps. And so students who struggled a bit in, in the first semester, get a chance to work on that in between the first and the second semester so that you're all um, good to go again for the second semester. Same for the end of the year. If we see that, that you struggled a bit, we, the boot camps help you there to, to get your knowledge up to scratch. And, and the reason we do that is because we know that the uh, academic year at UCT is very short. And so it's a lot of information you need to digest in a very short period. And so not, not everybody is able to do that. And, and so that doesn't make you more clever or less clever than, than someone else. And we all learn in a different way, in a different pace. And, and so having these sort of vacation programs or boot camps um, to allow students to, to catch up um, is really essential there. And, and ever since we've introduced them, we've seen that our uh, pass rates have gone from sort of um, 50 to 60 percent to well into the 70 percent um, for, for each of these um, of these courses. So, so that really makes our curriculum very unique. 
but there's more than just that. If, if we're a little bit deeper, like I said, we do a lot of, of project work and that project is usually in teams. Um, with, within those projects and, and that teamwork and also the practicals, you need to communicate about your work. Um, so, so there's this joke that's going around that chemical engineers and engineers in general are very good at doing very complex calculations, but they can't explain it to anyone what they've not actually done. Um, I can tell you wholeheartedly, and you'll see that from the student presentation as well, that is absolutely not true anymore. Um, our engineers nowadays are very good communicators. Um, and it's also essential because we need to explain to a lot of different people in different industries what we do and that what we do is 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 good and so we also have health and safety that we teach in, in each of these years and so, so so that strand runs through and we make you within that project space think about what is the economical impact what's the environmental impact what's the social impact and that that brings you to that that sustainability thinking and then there's computing as well so so all of these we call that strands and they run across the four years and so, so within those four years, we build up your knowledge in that. And if you analyze what, what kind of skills you learn in that, um, so, so then we're talking about complex problem solving, creativity, you need to make judgments within a project, you can't do everything you want. Um, the teamwork teaches you how to deal with, with other people, that's not always that straightforward, but also to show empathy towards each other, to, to encourage each other. Um, that the issues around social and environmental impact is around critical thinking and around sustainability, as I said. And if you then look at the skills that, that Forbes magazine has listed for the fourth industrial revolution, so the skills you need when you go into industry right now, then you see the same skills coming back. So, so it is around complex problem solving and create critical thinking um, and so on. You see all of them here. So all of these if you do chemical engineering at UCT, we, we consider that chemical engineering skill. So we make sure that during your degree, you, you, we teach them to you, you get to develop them. And this makes that our graduates don't only end up in the industries I showed before. So, so not only the chemical industry and the food and beverage industry, um, fast moving consumer goods, but also in, in every other sector of, of um, that you can think of. So, so we have a lot of our graduates that go into, into banking and finance because they can deal with very, very complex data sets and they can analyze them and they, they can see a pattern in them. Um, a lot of our graduates go into consultancy because they can, they can very quickly um, acquire new knowledge and use that creatively to, to go and come up with, with new solutions. So, so um, the unit operations allow you to go into a wide range of, of industries. This extra layer of skills um, set you apart from, from other graduates around the country and also allow you to go into a much wider um, array even of, of jobs going forward. And then the last bit of this presentation is of course um, the one that everybody always wonders about is what, what do I then actually need to get into this program? Um, so in, in your metric exam, we want you to have 80% um, and above for maths, 70% or above for physics. And then we add your, so, so, so that's the absolute um, minimum requirement. And then we take your English, maths and physical science score with the score of your best three subjects. And then you need to get, um, so that's six in total. And so we call that a faculty point score. And so if that score is higher than 510, you automatically get into the program. If you get a, a weighted score, so, so this is a score that, that's weighted um, with, with, what's, what's, with a certain factor that takes into account the kind of school you went to, your first language, um, the, the sort of how, how many people in your family that, that have gone to university already. So a lot of more sort of social factors around your background um, that sort of give us a sense of, of, you know, how difficult it was for you to get to this point. Um, we, we wait that that's in that, that waiting um, and that corrects this, this score of these six subjects. Uh, so, so if 
basically, if you've got 80% on average for all your subjects, um, you very likely get in. Um, and, and that very, I've put that between brackets because the last couple of years, everybody that falls into this category has, has made it in. And then you've got a C category, which and that depends on which, which where you see that the score is allowed to be a bit lower. Um, and that depends on, on how many applicants we have for the program um, and how the, the metric scores are in, in general and, and if we need to adjust um, across across our groups that we want to admit to the program. So, so it is very steep entry requirements, but that's also because um, it is a difficult program. But then we also feel that that once you get in, we have the responsibility to make sure that we do everything that we can um, to make you successful. And that, that's why we have that high 80% um, um, graduation rate in our in our program. So that was it from, from me in terms of what chemical engineering is and how we do it at UCT. Um, the next thing I'll show you is a little video about our um, custom facilities on the campus. students have to say so this is these are our class reps from the class that's just graduated and they'll give you an insight into how their experience was of their degree. We asked some of our recent graduates to tell us about their UCT chemical engineering experience. Let's meet them and hear what they have to say. Hi my name is Tanea Galela and I'm born and bred in Blumpentain. It's Tiana Hansraj and I am sitting in Johannesburg at the moment. Hi, my name is Abdullah. I'm originally from Durban, but I spent most of my life growing up in Saudi Arabia. Hi, I'm Catherine from Cape Town. Tell us about why you chose UCT Chemical Engineering. I chose UCT ChemEng because I was lucky enough to be awarded a full bursary when I was in matric. And at the time I heard that UCT was the best university in the country, still is. And as a result, I decided to pack my bags and fly on over to sunny Cape Town and I haven't regretted it since. So I chose chemical engineering because of the endless doors it opens in terms of your career after you study. And you also get to learn a unique set of problem solving skills that will equip you for your future. I chose UCT ChemEng because I love solving problems and working in teams. UCT because of the mountains and the beach, obviously. I went to school just down the road from UCT, so it was a natural progression for me to go to UCT. And in high school, I loved math and chemistry, and I'd heard that chemical engineering would open many doors. What did you enjoy the most about the UCT chemical engineering degree? 
What I enjoyed most about the degree was hands down the collaboration between myself and my classmates. I don't think I would have gotten through this journey without their help. And I'm so grateful for the relationships that we built and just for the way we approach problem solving, especially during a pandemic and final year. So what I enjoyed most about my degree was meeting an amazing group of people who I worked very closely with for uh, my time at university. The other thing I really enjoyed was how well equipped I felt leaving my degree and moving into the working environment. Chemical engineering is a very unique degree and it, it opens so many doors for you and that's what I really enjoyed. What I enjoyed the most about the degree was the complexity and the range of topics that we got to learn about. I also really enjoyed all the friends that I made along the journey and the department, which was incredibly supportive. Because of Chem and QCT, I've met some of the most amazing people and formed the most incredible friendships, and I'll be forever grateful. What was the most difficult part of the degree? I think the most difficult part of doing this degree <laughs> was getting through each day and not knowing which disruption is going to come at you, but constantly having to just push forward no matter what. I think the COVID pandemic was probably the most challenging because during final year in a pandemic is really difficult if you don't have your classmates nearby. Um, I think we relied a lot on each other and yeah, um, connecting from miles away was quite a challenge, but we managed to do it and I'm really grateful. Chemical engineering is a difficult degree. It's got quite a heavy uh, workload compared to other degrees, but being able to overcome that and managing that is an invaluable skill. And something that I loved was we got a lot of support from lecturers, um, you know, your tutors, etc. But biggest form of support were my other classmates going through the exact same thing. The most difficult part of the degree was working under intense time constraints to solve difficult projects, all of this in a team. The most difficult part about Chem and GCT is uh, definitely... Peter, can we end it there, please? You get very little sleep for okay. at least a week. <laughs> How did UCT Chemical Engineering help you grow as a person? I think going through Chem at UCT made me a really resilient person. Um, I don't really think that there's a lot of things that can get me down. I uh, didn't always have the easiest upbringing and stuff, but I think going into Kimmins just, it pushed me even further. It made me even stronger. And yeah, it definitely helped me grow into a strong young woman who is ready to take on the world. So that's unfortunately where we need to, need to end it. Our, our time is up. Um, you have the option to post questions in the in the Q and A, so please do that. We will we will try to answer as most of, of them as we can. Uh, but more important, and we'll also put some contact details there for you. Um, but most importantly, find us on um, Facebook and, and Instagram, and and post your quest. If you have more questions, ask them there as well. So so we have it's at UCT Cheminge. Uh, we've got people monitoring that those feeds all the time. So, so please um, go to the, the socials and, and follow us there um, and ask your questions there. We can help you um, there as well. And then I want to thank you for your time, your attention and your interest in Cambridge. And I hope we've given you a good idea of what Cambridge is about at UCT. Um, and we will also post these videos on our um, website fairly soon so if you want to look back at them you'll find them there as well so, so a good day to all of you from my side